on CLG's win. Thanks, Freak. We want to welcome Double Lift after a victory over, uh, oh my goodness, over Cloud9. <laughs> over Cloud9. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, and also congratulate you on your 500th regular season kill in 100 games. You're the first player in the North American LCS to do so. How does it feel? Oh boy. <laughs> cool. That's awesome. I'm the best. <laughs> I already knew that. So humble. Uh, well, also another first is this is your first win against C9 this season. Why have you guys struggled against them so much in the past? And why is this the first game you guys have won against them this series? Huh. I think, well, this year, this whole like uh, spring and summer split, I think we've been like the primary scrim partners for C9. Uh, and they just understand the way that we play. And we have like a lot more changes in our strategy than uh, most teams, especially because just because of roster problems, you know, just uh, Things get switched around a lot, and like we change the way we play. We change shot callers. We'll change the person who does picks and bans. But C9 has always gelled as like one team, and so I think they have that advantage. And uh, people say like, oh, we have a mental block against them. And honestly, I would just attribute a lot of that to just like really unlucky like choking in LAN. Uh, we make a lot of plays we would normally do in scrims, where we just end up throwing a huge lead, like an insurmountable lead, uh, to C9. And when they end up losing, we're like, oh my god, we did it again. Like we suck so bad. So it's just a bad feeling, but. Uh, I think we finally fixed that problem. All right, well, you got the win. Uh, jumping into champ select, though, we saw Kale picked by Cloud9. Was that a surprise to you guys? Because they blue side banned it last week. Uh, actually, it was it was kind of surprising for us because I think Kale's kind of fallen out of favor for top lane. As, and especially, like, C9's not the kind of team, well, we thought that would pick Kale. Uh, we thought Balls would just play like Renekta and Mundo. I mean, he, pu he busted out Mundo today. I was expecting him to bust it out again versus us because it just seemed like a pretty logical pick. Uh, for their comp, at least. But, yeah, they went with an early pick kill, and I, I don't know, I guess they just changed up their priorities for us because because we know each other so well, it's it's actually really smart to change, to, to surprise the team that knows you the most, you know, and yeah. just pull out something random. Yeah, they definitely tried something new. That was the first time that Balls has played Kale in the top lane in the LCS that we've seen, yeah. and you guys just camped it really hard, mm -hmm. and then you let all the other lanes just be. Was that the game plan? You just saw Kale and you're like, we're going to go after that over and over again. Or was he just opportunity and he was just out there? I think it was a little bit of both because I think Seraph knows the top lane matchup really well. And it's like this squishy 400 range Kale who's always pushing, which is like Kale's biggest issue is when she's landing 1v1, uh, she's always pushing because, you know, you have to activate your E to, to start CSing. And then against Renekton, that's like a big no-no. Like it's kind of just like a, a champion mismatch where like Renekton is really good with ganks and Kale's probably one of the easiest champions to get ganked. And so as soon as she died once, it's kind of over uh, because we have TF. And uh, like after that, it's just death after death after death and then Renekton snowballs from there. All right, we want to take a quick look at a replay actually 16 minutes into the game. This is where you guys managed to take four kills and three turrets in exchange for nothing. Can you walk us through this? Yeah, sure. So right here, uh, me and Sneaky, or the 2v2 matchup is actually not going very well. And I just do a uh, Twitch Roam on Meteos because uh, I just think he's going to come either clear our wards or go contest our red. And then I don't know why High is here. I think he was here to try to help Meteos and he didn't really think that uh, bottom lane would randomly show up right here. And uh, I guess the replay's over. This is like an, <laughs> well, another part. Oh, it's fast forwarding <laughs> where we end up pushing mid. So uh, normally I would have went bottom to catch the farm after I got a kill. But my team was like, just take mid tier two. And I was like, oh yeah, we can just do that. And I can just give up a, a horrible little tower, like tier one. And then like Lemon tries to make a really big play here. And I think Liv, Link lives here because of Dangerous Game. Yeah. The best mastery in the game, baby. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we end up taking, I think, two towers and three kills right here, or like four kills. It was, uh, it was a really impressive series by us, but I think if their bottom lane had just called missing, then it, none of that would have happened. Yeah, a little bit of a misplay there every now and then. Yeah. But I guess Dangerous Game is probably a fantastic mastery for somebody who has 500 kills in the season. Yeah, exactly. Oh, man. Just a phenomenal score. Phenomenal play by you guys all around there. Afro jumping in, supporting, and making sure that he didn't take that last cue. Just a great replay throughout. Um, you guys ended up losing a fight and going 4-0 for a dragon in the mid game there. Like, oh, what was yeah. the thought process? We, we lost a fight mid lane. Uh, I think we uh, link was saying, guys, I need a base to get Hourglass, which is probably one of TF's biggest power specs, if not his biggest power spec during the game. As soon as you get Hourglass, you just instantly force a fight. And not only is the enemy team unaware that you probably bought it, but uh, it's just like the strongest item on TF. So he's like, I need a base, guys. And at the same time, there was like kind of conflicting stuff where like, oh, we should, we can catch these guys, we can catch these guys. And uh, he ended up having to like pour it in without, our, without having bought his Hourglass. And then we just lost the fight from there because we overestimated our strength. And I think that's one of the biggest reasons, honestly, why we lose against the United is because we're so eager to prove ourselves that 
we can beat them, that we jump the gun, and we don't take it as slowly as we should against a team of their caliber. Well, we can fast forward now to a dragon fight where you did have those items. You were at the power spike that you needed. It's about 19, almost 20 minutes into the game. Uh, we get a nice teleport in from Link, which you can go ahead and explain to us here. Yeah. Uh, I think... Yeah, we're, we're all sitting on pretty big spikes right here. So I'm on my fork, and Link has gotten just finished his rod. So they're funneling in in probably the worst spot to play against Twitch. Uh, you see, like, four of these carries, and the reason why they're splitting up right here is because they don't all want to funnel into the same spot, but it's also really bad to split. And this is why TF Twitch is so powerful, is it splits a team comp up in, in situations where, obviously, you don't want to be split up against Twitch TF, but you don't want to be grouped either. So there's, like, no win here. And then Sneaky uh, just gets kited right here. He does the right thing, which is move forward, like run away from the TF with the gold card. But there's just nothing that they can do because Hyde just instantly died. And uh, yeah, the power of TF Twitch obviously is as soon as you put someone in a bad position, it's like, what do you do? Do you funnel into Twitch ulti or do you split up and just get picked off by a TF? There's like no win right there. Yeah. And speaking of winning, though, you guys are 11 and 5 right now. You guys have the most wins currently. Dig is right behind you. They played less games, but they're at 10 and 5 right on your heels. How does it feel to go 2-0 in Super Week at the start, and how are you guys going to close it out? Well, it wouldn't be counter logic if uh, I didn't think like 2-2 two two was it in the back of my mind, you know? Like, I'm just, I'm just hoping that we don't make a horrible mistake and just like randomly lose to LMQ and Curtis for the rest of the week, because uh, today was pretty rough. Honestly, we had a, a pretty hard time against Complexity, and then that C9 game was still pretty shaky. I know we have a lot to work on, so right now any team can beat any team. I'm... I'm just hoping we can finally make a 4-0 Super Week. I, I think, historically, CLG has never won more than two games in a Super Week, so I hope to, to break that. All right, well, with that 4-0 Super Week in mind, you've got LMQ tomorrow. What's the game plan there? How are you prepping for that? Uh, we think LMQ is, like, the team that most co closely copies Koreans. And, like, whenever we, uh, whenever there's, like, an OGN match and something new gets spread out, so, for example, it's, like, Kale Toplin with Kog'Maw or something, uh, you'll just instantly, the next day, you'll see LMQ run that. And uh, I think it's in part because they have so much staff on hand to like feed them information, be like, hey, this is what's wrong, this is what Korea is doing. And then they just kind of copy. Uh, but I don't know. I don't know what I think about them. At the very beginning of the season, it was like, oh my god, uh, Xiaohui Zhao and Vasily, they're going to they're gonna be so strong. It's going to be really scary to face them. And then now it's, uh, it's really not as scary. I think I, I got my confidence against Vasily, even though I, was, I know he's really, really good. Probably like top 2, top 3 AD carry right now. Uh, I've beaten him multiple times in lane, and I'm not really as scared of him as I used to be. All right. Yeah. Well, best of luck tomorrow. Thank you for all of your insight. And, of course, congratulations again on that 500th kill. Well, we've got to take one last break before our final LCS game of the day, TSM versus Curse. Don't go anywhere. The North American LCS...